It seems like fans have been waiting for Halo Infinite to release for literally ever, and with it finally here, of course the new Halo game has a ton of secrets and easter eggs throughout its entire campaign. And while we've already done a video dedicated to covering some of the easter eggs that we found in the multiplayer, for today's video we wanted to dive in a little bit deeper, looking at some of the biggest and some of the most obscure easter eggs from Halo Infinite. A lot of these you may not have actually seen yet, because there's a ton in the campaign, so let's Let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, to start things off, do you guys remember like 14 years ago when Halo 3 came out? There was this big, massive mystery on the Halo 3 multiplayer level sand trap. Everybody was suspicious. There was some secrets under there. There were these glyphs that showed up and writing on the wall and everyone just wondered what was going on with sand trap. And then those glyphs then again showed up on Epitaph and in other places in the Halo 3 multiplayer. We never got a full explanation, but the description of the map in Halo 3 3 does suggest that there is some sort of mystery down below and we know that this is a brute dig site. So interestingly enough we'd like to think that this idea ended up being an inspiration for the actual dig site in Halo Infinite as when you go down underground into the level itself you can find these exact same glyphs on display here. And now of course we don't fully understand what these glyphs mean yet. Obviously this could be playing into a major plot point into the future, but we can at least assume that these glyphs that were also found on the Ark and the glyphs on Zeta Halo are related. Now we did further analyze these a bit and we do realize that the textures in Halo Infinite were not just a copy and paste from the Halo 3 glyphs. They are slightly different, though we think that they are very obviously a straight up callback and they likely just were recreating the same type of glyphs for Halo Infinite fresh so it would look good in Halo Infinite's design. Still, something really amazing and something we think is a really cool nod to an iconic mystery from the classic Halo days. Halo 2 Anniversary set the precedent of hiding dolls throughout the campaign, and Halo Infinite follows in suit, where scattered throughout the open world you can find various different Halo characters in these little doll forms. So far, the community has found Cortana, Master Chief, the Pilot, the Arbiter, the Librarian, then Sergeant Johnson, then we have a Grunt, and then we have Locke, the Harbinger, and the Endless as dolls. And these are just the ones that have been discovered so far, there could be more in the game that just haven't been found yet. We talked about how in Halo's multiplayer we did notice this weird abundance of sandwiches starting to show up, and as it turned out there was actually something more to the sandwiches than what it appeared to be on the surface of the multiplayer. I don't know, I thought that sandwich was just way too detailed to just be a sandwich for the sake of being a sandwich. As it turns out, hidden in the open world, there is a secret cave that you can grapple up into, and you can find a giant sandwich with a bunch of grunts dancing around it, and it's honestly pretty great. If you look through the credits of Halo Infinite, you'll notice that nearly every single Halo YouTuber is either in the Forerunner or the Pilot section of the credits, which is pretty cool. However, we were really surprised that they managed to forget us, considering how sensational and humble we are here at Rocket Sloth. And while 343 did miss out on the opportunity of including the second best Halo YouTubers of all time, we were incredibly ecstatic to see an easter egg dedicated to the best Halo YouTuber of all time with the achievement hidden experience. Also, there's a few Halo achievements in Infinite that are named after some subtle or not so subtle references from the Halo universe. For instance, there's an achievement called Outpost Discovery based off of the real world Halo event that happened a couple of years back. There's the Natural Formation Location Sensation achievement, which is where you gain access to the loot cave in a match made game. But the achievement obviously is a callback to the level Halo when Cortana informs us that this area Area is in fact not a natural cave formation, in case you didn't notice. There's another achievement called I'm Ready, How About You, an obvious homage to Emil from Halo Reach. Also, if you go through the trouble of finding all of the Spartan audio logs in the Halo Infinite campaign, you'll get an achievement called Rubicon Protocol, which is a reference to the upcoming book set to release sometime next year, Halo, the Rubicon Protocol. If you scan all seven of the Forerunner artifacts in the campaign, you can get 
get an achievement called Haruspis, which is a direct homage to a very prominent Halo community member who's worked on a ton of lore related community projects and just recently has been employed by 343 Industries and is now a community writer, which is really cool. A lot of you may have already found this one, but there is this secret entranceway that has this special arcade in the back of it that is the same arcade you can see in the multiplayer map streets, except this one has a larger array of awesome chip tune sounding music. And if you look on the back of it, it looks like there is some writing on it that could be a nod to some inside joke or a developer at 343. Twitter user Jedro, and yes, this is his Twitter profile picture, showed off this really cool Easter egg where if you go underneath a waterfall, you can see written in the rock the name Joel, or maybe it's Joe, but he thinks that maybe this is an Easter egg to the Halo Infinite soundtrack composer Joel Korolitz, but it could also be Joel Yarger, who is a lead music super supervisor and producer at 343 Industries, or if the name's Joe and not actually Joel, it could be someone like Joe Staten. But of course, both Joe and Joel are common enough names, so it could be a different developer at 343 who worked on this section and hid this in there. Still really cool, and we'll probably eventually learn more details on that later on. If you climb to the very top of the tower, you can actually find a really cool homage to the infamous Craig, where it looks like he may have been doing some rehearsals up here on top of the tower and you can even see a poster for the Craig Zeta Halo Tour which is in 2560. Also you can look at his album art and flip it over to take a closer look at the set list or song list that is available in the album. YouTuber Matthew 010 found this really interesting dialogue of a marine who's trying to wrap his head around some of the grunts. Also right when you get in the outside area in the campaign for the first time if you click climb up to where these guns are and stand on this specific one, you can actually pick up an invisible tank gun, it's essentially just a scorpion gun that has unlimited ammo to use, and while it's still unknown whether or not this was intentional or maybe a slip up by 343, it's definitely something that can be kind of fun to use and something you can carry along with you throughout your whole adventure. Also in that same area, there's a couple of hidden switches you can do that will then trigger an airstrike that you can call in on the enemies, which is kind of neat. The Halo Infinite achievement, Bring Sheila Home Safely, is actually a really clever homage to the famous Red vs. Blue, where Sheila is of course everyone's favorite tank. And there's also a secret cave that you can grapple up into where you can find an original Xbox hooked up, sort of, ready to go to play some classic Halo Combat Evolved. Not really, but it's still something that's kind of cool to look at. A few videos back, we were looking at the different species that were mounted inside of this Forerunner structure and talked about these being the chosen species by the Forerunner, and as it turns out, our boy General Kid discovered the secret ultimate fourth species, which is the secret rat easter egg. It may actually be one of the gophers we see on Zeta Halo, but still, it is something that's really cool and you should check out General Kid's full video on it if you want to see more of it. If you travel to the third island on the mission sequence, you may notice a mountain with an interesting looking Forerunner structure overlooking a beautiful vista. On the structure itself, there's two Forerunner glyphs, which if you translate the Forerunner alphabet to English, you'll realize spell out the letters J H, which is a tribute to Jens Hotch, who was a technical artist at 343 Industries who sadly passed away in spring of 2020. This is an incredibly cool and respectful way to immortalize him in the game itself that he helped to design. Towards the bottom of the map, if you head into this tunnel, you can actually find a brute hologram outlining a very interesting looking closed off canyon that may or may not be a direct reference to the classic Blood Gulch from Halo Combat Evolved. Who knows, maybe one day we'll have this map return in all of its glory in Halo Infinite. There's also this really interesting Easter egg that Ryab on YouTube discovered, and I'm just gonna let his initial reaction explain it because it just sums it up perfectly. What happened down here? Yeah, <laughs> I'm guessing they fell in this pit together and they're like, whoa, guess we gotta work together. Yeah, because they didn't shoot each other. Oh wait, no, hang on. What it looks like is they were making their own forks. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's actually funny. <laughs> it's like red versus blue. Wait! 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 wait, wait. <laughs> if you noticed the body of the brute Hyperius, you may have noticed you can see Locke's helmet and chest plate is being used as his shoulder pad here. And while we obviously don't know anything about the state of this character, we do know from Spartan Griffin that they will forcibly remove Spartan's armors and then move the Spartan elsewhere. So while there's still hope for Locke's survival, we do know if he does return, he either won't be in his armor or he'll have some new threads he gets to show off. There's also a grunt propaganda tower that yells some stuff about Hyperius having Locke's armor as well. Also, while on the topic of grunt propaganda towers, there is this funny dialogue where a grunt starts making fun of human names and names off a bunch of developers at 343 Industries. Easter Lang, McDonough, Lindy, Crocker, where'd you come up with that stupid crap? Actually, there's a ton of little hilarious moments of grunts just saying random things or just funny moments of dialogue that popped up in Halo Infinite's campaign. And fortunately enough, our friend Garbit has actually gone and uploaded a huge selection of these Easter eggs along with a lot of other Halo Infinite Easter eggs. So if you want to hear the full extent of some of these Easter eggs, go over to his channel at the end of this video to watch the full thing. But thankfully enough, he let us use some of his footage for this video so that we could kind of save ourselves trouble of trying to hunt down every single easter egg. Like for instance, there's this moment where a grunt finds out that Master Chief's real name is John. So wait a minute, I just found out that the Master Chief's name is John. John? John? We're afraid of a guy named John? There's a few clever singing easter eggs throughout Halo Infinite. Like in this case, there is an AI singing the Halo theme. <laughs> And there also is a grunt that sings the Halo theme through one of the grunt propaganda towers. And while we have talked about this a bit already, where you may notice during the loading screens in Halo Infinite, there's a ton of references to previous Halo games. There's also other references beyond just Halo that are apparent in the loading sequences, just like references to Star Wars or even references to Hamilton. And it's kind of just something that's interesting. And whoever was in charge of writing out the little text that shows up in the loading screens, they definitely knocked out of the park and did a really good job with them. If you climb on top of this tower and just look around and take in the skybox, the original Halo theme will just play and it just builds into the ambiance so much. Not sure if this counts as an easter egg, but it's definitely something that is worth stopping and doing if you're in this area when playing through the campaign. There's also this dialogue right here, featured in one of the later levels of the game. Which is an obvious callback to Halo 3's Cortana. I have walked the edge of the abyss. I have seen your future and I have learned. But even more interestingly, that line actually has an even earlier history, going all the way back to 1999's Cortana Letters, which was a series of emails sent out to promote upcoming announcements for what would become Halo. Also on this level, if you go and press three switches that are kind of spread apart, you can actually activate a secret rocket hog that'll come up and you can use it in your battles. It's kind of cool. Over by the dig site, there's actually a way that you can activate several switches that will turn on the mining laser, which you can use to take out some of the banish that may be in your way. Over on streets in multiplayer, there's this out of bounds section. And over on this secret wall, there is some graffiti that says ODST. We remember. Also, if you ping this trash can, it says Oscar's house. Okay, so did we miss any Halo Easter eggs from the campaign that you may have found on your journey? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, you can check out the other videos we've done from the multiplayer side of things back when multiplayer first released. And even before that, when the flights happened, there were some Easter eggs back then that didn't make their way into the final version of the game. So they're kind of 
cut Easter eggs now. Kind of interesting to see how much can change in such a short amount of time. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications on. Double check you have that bell all set up so you get notified when we put up a video and it at least ups the odds of the YouTube algorithm actually dropping one of our videos on your home screen or something like that. I think that's how it works. Not 100% sure, but to double check, you can make sure you do have your notifications on. I know everyone says this on YouTube, but if you're gonna put notifications on for anyone, it ought to be us because we at least appreciate it. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.